Hello and welcome to Dialects. Well, my name's Joe and I'm making videos about accents and dialects of English. Now so far in this series I've been using those two terms accent and dialect pretty much interchangeably and in technical linguistic terms that is true. In common speech though they're kind of used as points on a spectrum with accents you completely understand on one end, languages you have to learn on the other and dialects somewhere in between. With this in mind I'd probably put the way of speaking I'm covering today, Geordie, somewhere around here on this spectrum for reasons I'll come back to later. But first Geordie is the name of a dialect spoken in the city of Newcastle in the far northeast of England and the surrounding area. Now, like most of the dialects I've been covering so far, Geordie is to some extent a socialect of the working classes of this area, but not to anywhere near the same extent as Cockney and MLE. While almost no middle class Londoners speak those dialects, you'll hear a tinge of Geordie at least in the speech of everyone who grows up in Newcastle. Examples of such people include Alan Shearer, former footballer and current pundit. I think now they've got the personnel to take it that one, to one stage further. Comedian Sarah Millican. People only live on their own if they've got no friends or nobody loves them. And the cast of Geordie Shaw, which I'm not going to show you. Now, so far I've been covering dialects native to my home city, London, so I've been able to do a decent imitation of what those sound like. I have a feeling, though, that if I did that for this video, it would just be offensive to everyone involved, so I brought in a couple of sample Geordies to help demonstrate some of the ph phonological aspects of the dialect. Say hello. First things first, Geordie doesn't have the bath trap split. Bath trap. It does have the put putt merger. Put putt. It doesn't have TH fronting and it's non rhotic. I parked the car in Harvard Yard. Go and watch my first video for no idea what I'm babbling about there. Some features of the consonants of Geordie are shared with Cockney, which is perhaps surprising given the geographical separation of the two dialects. These include G dropping, which I didn't mention last time, which is where words that end in ing will almost certainly be pronounced in rather than ing, for example. I'm going to be running around the playing field. Another one shared with Cockney, which I did mention last time, is the non-releasing of intervocalic plosives. So where I'd say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper, Caitlin would say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. One of the differences between the vowels of Geordie and my Southern Standard English concerns the schwa, that's the uh sound that appears in unstressed syllables in words like confirm and concern. In Geordie, it's much more open, so where I'd say sugar and wonder, a Geordie would say sugar and wonder. The biggest difference concerning the vowels, though, is that Geordie has far fewer diphthongs. So while my and boy are still my and boy, may, me. Mo, Mo and sometimes town tune. are all single sounds. That last word town turning into tune is one of the more famous pieces of Geordie vocabulary to the point where the fans of Newcastle United Football Club are known as the Toon Army. Toon Toon, Black and White Army, Toon Toon. And it's because of this huge amount of vocabulary unique to the northeast of England that I put Geordie where I did on the dialect continuum earlier. There's a huge number of words that, if you'd never heard them before, you'd have no idea what they meant, which would make a sentence like Way I pet, I'm going in a tune for some tabs, then I'm going to yam. The Ben's seen an a cop, and he's been a reet reggie about it. Completely incomprehensible to most other people. And that's understandable, a lot of those words are holdovers from the old Norse settlements of the area, and they're in mainstream use in Scandinavia today. For example, let's compare the Geordie word for home with the Norwegian. Yem. Yem. Child. Ben. Barn. And spider. Attica. Attica. Now we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves. I'm not saying Geordie is completely incomprehensible to anyone not born within the city limits of Newcastle. It's still very much a variant of English by any standard, and Geordies won't struggle to make themselves understood to Londoners if they want to be. There are examples of Geordie vocabulary that represent a split from standard English, but aren't anywhere near as unintelligible as the words in that very dialect-heavy sentence that Caitlin read out earlier. These include... Use. For the second person plural. Along. For a long, and as discussed before... Two. For town. It is probably the most divergent dialect in the UK that doesn't make any claims at being a separate language though, and thank you to Ashanti and Caitlin for helping demonstrate that. Next time I'll be staying in the north of England but heading to the opposite coast. Lancashire is coming up next. See you then.